Okay. Hello, everyone. We're just going to wing it. Uh, this is the first video on the channel. I'm just going to give a little presentation and a little talk about my experience with hard flaccid syndrome and how I got rid of it. Uh, I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to tell you guys what worked for me, what recommendations I have. Um, yeah. I had it for six months. Um, just your penis uh, goes dead. You can't feel it. It's cold. It's numb. It's a fraction of what it used to be. Uh, it's no fun. It's no fun at all. So I'm going to tell you about what I did. And by the way, do not click out of this video. Don't, uh, if you have hard fun, I said don't skip around. You need to watch this whole thing through because I think there's a good chance I could say something that's going to help you. Um, okay, disclaimer, you know, I'm not a medical professional of any type. Uh, this video is meant for entertainment purposes only, and take all of your actions at your own risk. I'm not liable for any consequences that you encounter. So, to start things off, um, this video isn't really meant to be watched all the way through. I'll tell you when there's an example photo to look at that you might need to know. Um, but right now, just start doing sit and reach as you listen to the video and it's important like in the example photo that you have both feet forward and you touch both your, or your take it slow I mean you just want to lean forward slowly but you reach for your front two feet at the same time together not one at a time because we don't want to do anything that uh, puts your legs in opposite directions we're gonna get more into that later but yeah that's just that should give you guys some relief as you watch this video um, before we even get into the nitty gritty like some stretches and some exercises make things worse um, that's true that's incredibly true for whatever reason if I do sit and reach with you know I touch both of my feet at the same time and I, I you have to take it really slowly I mean you guys can probably uh, not even reach past your <laughs> barely reach past your knees you're probably feeling tightness all the way up into your feet yeah that's real um, you need to get rid of that through uh, your sit and reach if you're feeling tension all the way through your feet because I definitely felt that so um, yeah I guess we're just gonna go over everything uh, what is hard flaccid it's just a symptom of a pelvic floor disorder um, and there's different causes for it. There's kind of different variants of it, right? Like there's a part, um, there's a kind that doesn't hurt much, and there's a kind that hurts a lot. Um, if you have hard flaccid syndrome and you don't have any chronic pelvic pain, that's the kind I had. Um, and that might, my hypothesis, I mean, it's just a hypothesis, I think that's the worst kind. <laughs> Why is that? Because I think the reason you're not feeling pain is because the lack of blood flow is so terrible that your nerves aren't even working, okay? And that can be something that we need to fix because while your penis is fine, you can be blocking blood that you need to your testicles, and so you stop making, uh, for the time being, you stop making sperm and you stop making testosterone and uh, you're just super tired. If it gets to that point, okay, it's probably just starting. Or maybe it isn't. I don't know what, I don't know where you're at. A lot of people have had this forever. So my understanding <clears throat> of hard flaccid is pretty similar to what Greg HF says. He's another YouTuber that speaks on this issue. Uh, yeah, it's a result of tension throughout your body. Um, you can get this tension through a multitude of ways. Uh, stress, muscular imbalances throughout the body. Stress will just make everything way worse. You're probably super stressed because you don't know what's going on. Um, and, uh... Oh, right, and um, and this is a problem throughout your whole body. This isn't just a problem in your pelvis. Your entire body's messed up. That's why you're doing sit and reach right now, and you're just slowly, you know, you're just gradually holding that position. I mean, you can't go any further. You just hold it, 
and you keep holding that. I mean, you're going to have to do a lot of sit and reach for a long time. So what can cause it? I know that irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel syndrome, anything that's going to give you loose stole, um, anything where your poops aren't going to be very solid, that can encourage hard flaccid. There seems to be a correlation between irritable bowel syndrome and hard flaccid. I think I have some sort of this. Um, peeing can kind of give you relief from it sometimes. Um, and and there's, there's frequent urination as well. Uh, peeing, that release, if you kind of lean forward while you pee, that can kind of give you a bit of relief from it. But bowel movements pretty much always make it worse um and i think there's a correlation between that and just slightly worse not significantly worse okay and um there's also seems to be a lot of people who have anterior pelvic tilt and hard flaccid at the same time um yeah that, and that's caused by a weak glutes uh you know a weak buttocks and and very tight hamstrings. If you need an example of that, I have an example photo here if you don't know what anterior pelvic tilt looks like. It's pretty popularized today, so I mean, there's a good chance you already know what anterior pelvic tilt is. Um, people can also kind of get hard flaccid from sitting all day. You get anterior pelvic tilt from sitting all day, so that only makes sense. While you have hard flaccid, heavy lifting is going to encourage it. It's going to make it worse. I know that's tough. Um, you know, I was very much into weightlifting. Um, I was considering a job in the fitness industry. Um, not so much considering it anymore because I've since stopped working out. I plan on getting back into it within the next year. Um, yeah, and, and excessive Kegel exercises or sexual activity can, uh, can encourage hard flaccid syndrome. You need to stop masturbating if you haven't already. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, right. What I think's going on with the, the sitting all day, how that can cause a tensed pelvic floor, is that with your anterior pelvic tilt, with your weak buttocks, what's happening is that your pelvis, this is just another hypothesis, your pelvis, these, these muscles, are tense and they're doing the job for your buttocks. Your buttocks says, hey, I'm weak, I can't hold my back up straight. And so your pelvis takes over and instead of your glutes being slightly engaged to keep your back straight all day, um, this pelvic floor is compensating and these muscles are not meant for that at all. And um, also if you think about the form of your body when you're sitting, um, your glutes aren't engaged to keep your body upright if you were sitting down in a chair, but your pelvis would be. And so you've kind of been sitting for so long that now your pelvis doesn't know how to not take over. It's used to keeping your body upright in that chair all day, and your glutes aren't used to being worked. Oh, and, and what something that's not... Uh, that you wouldn't think of is for me, squatting would make my heart flaccid worse because I'd be like, oh, I want to make uh, my glutes strong again, so I'd you know do a squat and it would just get way worse. It's just any lifting would make mine worse. So, you know, there's things doctors can help with. There's things that they can't help with. Uh, I wasted a ton of money on a scrotal ultrasound and a CT scan, um, thousands of dollars. Yeah, they they both came up dry. I mean, they didn't get anything beneficial from those tests. I wasted a lot of time and money talking to medical professionals, trying to get help for hard flaccid syndrome. I saw everybody. I mean, this was five visits to my primary care physician. I went to the emergency room. I went to an urgent care. I saw a gastrointestinal specialist. And... What I thought would help the most was actually the most useless guy out of all of them. Um, it was the urologist. I mean, they even gave me false blood work results. It was it was terrible service. Um, oh, and not to mention I had a, a hernia prior to getting hard flaccid syndrome. And I also visited that surgeon twice. Um, I had 
you know, I was thinking maybe that hernia operation had something to do with my heart flaccid acting up. Um, to this day, I can't prove or disprove that. So here's how doctors can help you. Um, you need, if you're stressed out, and you probably are, you're going to need to get on an antidepressant, um, especially if you have stress to the point that it's making your heart flaccid worse. Uh, not all antidepressants uh, work the same. If you don't know, I'm probably going to go over this again later. You know, we might say some things twice, but um, uh, depression and anxiety are treated with the same medications. So you're going to be given an antidepressant for your stress. That's just how it works. Um, if they want to give you something like Lexapro, uh, I don't doubt that Lexapro can help some people, but all of my friends throughout our teenage years, everybody that I know that went on Lexapro said it did nothing for them. Um, it's one of the first they might try on you. Um, I did sertraline, uh, 50 milligrams once a day. A lot of times I'd just take half of it. And eventually I would just take a third of it once I started getting better. Um, and that worked way better for me than Lexapro. They also told me that the search link wouldn't start working for like two weeks. Uh, you know, it started working the next day. Um, I didn't go to a pelvic floor therapist. They might help you, but I didn't go to one. Um, and maybe I'll try it in the future. I don't know. Um, and as far as the irritable bowel syndrome goes, I mean... Like, I plan on getting a colonoscopy in the future. I really can't afford it right now because I already have so much debt from... And I'm young. I'm 19. Um, so, I, I mean, I plan on getting a colonoscopy to get diagnosed for the... Whatever, you know, the irritable bowel syndrome is. But um, I can't do that right now. So, you know, you, you might benefit from that if you're undiagnosed as far as that goes. Or maybe you don't need to see someone for a colonoscopy. I don't know you. Uh, that, that was just in my case. Um, so back to having decreased uh, blood flow to your testicles, right? I um, If your testicles can't get blood, they're going to stop making testosterone. Um, and, and, and you can have some signs of this already, even if you're not at like a detrimental point, because I got testosterone levels so low, I became um, incredibly fatigued and lethargic. I couldn't really get out of bed because you know, I, I couldn't get any testosterone. You don't have testosterone, you feel terrible. Um, so some warning signs of that can be like if you're developing gynecomastia, man boobs, if you, well, you probably have you might already have a low sex drive or low energy because you're not really looking to be part of that thing right now, but those are also signs. Um, hopefully you can stop this before you need to get on testosterone replacement therapy. I hope that doesn't stress you out more. Um, you're probably pretty prone to stress right now. I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, we, we want to fix this before that. Uh, just hopefully you're still doing your sit and reach. And if you don't already know, there's nothing wrong with your penis. Um, that does go back, size and everything. Um, for a while, it might be a little numb. Um, or, you know, you, you can't really feel it as much, but that goes back too. So, what does work? As far as you... And I'm going to give you lots of, uh, lots of tips. So, you don't, if you don't like what you see on this slide, keep watching. You need to watch the whole video. Uh, see a chiropractor. I mean, tell them you have a terrible tightness in your pelvis. Tell them that you've seen all these doctors and they just don't know what it is or that healthcare professionals don't know what it is. Um, even if you don't necessarily feel it, because you can't feel it, just tell them this so that they can imagine it. You know, tell them that you feel like you have a clenched jaw in your pelvis and you just can't release it. And there's going to be a few adjustments that they're going to need to do from, for you that you can get from a chiropractor. They're going to adjust your pelvis on a drop table. They're going to touch your butt a bit. It's going to happen. Your pelvis is behind your butt. And they're going to, I mean, just make some really small adjustments to your pelvis that way. They're going to need to tug your leg 
to give you um, a saccharatial joint adjustment. That's, I think that's the ball and socket where your femur goes into your pelvis, right? They're gonna tug that a bit and you're gonna feel a pop sound in your hip on either side. Um, and they're gonna need to do that over and over again, you know, cause that's just gonna keep going back. You know, they, they need to do that every time you see them. The doctor will put your leg between doctor, uh, chiropractors aren't doctors. Um, they're similar. Some of them are doctors, not all of them. Um, they're gonna put your leg between theirs and they're gonna squeeze it between their legs while they're standing up and you're laying down and they're gonna tug it back and your whole body's gonna slide a bit and you're gonna feel a pop in your hip and um, that's something that you need to have done. Um, and this is also really important. They need to dig their thumb into your hip flexors on the side of your pelvis and crank your leg up and down, kind of like a tire iron taking wheels off of a car. And they're just going to crank your leg up and down with their thumb pressing down on your hip flexors. And that's going to create little micro tears in them. And because you need those to stretch out, and that's one way to do it. You don't want to overdo that because if you over damage it, then it's going to tighten up. Right? You need just the right mix. Um, yeah, I get that antidepressant. <laughs> it's gonna improve your symptoms dramatically. There's no magic pill to fix your pet, your stress, but you know this is gonna take the edge off. Lexapro didn't work for me. I took sertraline. Something that my doctor didn't tell me about sertraline. Um, she told me that people typically take antidepressants at night. That's bad advice. Um, in the case of sertraline, you should take that in the morning because if you take that at night, you're gonna be up all night. All right, it'll give you insomnia. And that was quite scary for me because I grew up with insomnia. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm going back. <laughs> you know, when, it, when I was developing, I couldn't sleep at night. I grew out of it into adulthood. But, you know, for a while I couldn't sleep. So I was like, okay, this isn't working. But, yeah, take it in the morning. Uh, you should be able to sleep fine at night. Avoid caffeine. You shouldn't be really having caffeine unless it's in green tea because green tea only has a little, little, little bit. Um because caffeine's also going to tighten everything up, so no caffeine either. Full body massages. So, all the muscles in your body are incredibly tense. Like we said earlier, it's not just your pelvis, it's everything. Um, and a lot of people report that massages aren't doing anything for them, they aren't improving their condition. I don't think they're doing it the right way. I don't think they're doing it long enough. Uh, maybe they're seeing a masseuse. Maybe they're, excuse me, maybe they're getting massaged for an hour. Whatever it is, it's probably not enough. I mean, you need to get all the fascia in your body. You, you, have, you have fascia all over your body, and you kind of have one fascia, right? And so let's imagine for a second that, you know, you're, you're, it's like a skin under your skin, Okay, so let's say you were to be running out of fascia. Your fascia is so tight that your body needs to tug it from somewhere. Well, guess what part of your body is made of almost completely fascia? Almost all of your penis is made of fascia. And so when your body's fascia is tight and it needs some more mobility, um, that's where it's going to get it from. Okay, and you can get it back. You know, it'll stretch back out, but you, know, you need to follow the instructions in this video. Oh, yeah. And uh, hot showers can increase the effectiveness of your massages. And you're going to need to get an electric massage tool. I used, I don't think this is the best thing. This is what I used, though, because I already had it and it was cheap. Um, I used a neck massager that you're supposed to just rest your head on and I just rubbed it all over my whole body um, and you need to get your entire body I mean really focus on your butt and your thighs you know your leg I mean and your, your pelvis and your calves but you need to get your entire body I mean your collarbones your 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 feet you know your pecs your upper back your neck you need to get everything but really focus on your buttocks and your thighs and you can't get this with 
you know, through a human and you can't get this massage out with your hands, you need a machine to do it for you. Uh, something better, if you have it, uh, would be like a mas uh, <clears throat> kind of a massage gun, right? That would work well. Otherwise, if you're balling on a budget, you're going to look to get a, a neck massager, and that should work just fine until it breaks. <laughs> um, yeah, back to the sit and reach. For, for whatever reason, this did wonders for me. Um, I would try other types of yoga or physical therapy. Um, I would watch videos like how to cure hard flaccid, and I'd do the exercises or the stretches or... I would say I would, I would go to Jeff Cavalier with athletenext.com and I'd say, hey, how do I fix my anterior pelvic tilt? And everything I'd do would just make my heart flaccid worse. Um, sit and reach is the one stretch that uh, has really helped me. And you got to take it slow. Oh, oh, one more thing. I, I, I forgot to put it in the presentation, actually. Uh, sit and reach and um, what is it? I don't know what it's called, but stretching your thigh out, uh, bringing your ankle up to your butt, you know, like like you're doing butt kicks, stretching the front of your thigh out that way, kind of the opposite of the sit and reach. That's a good idea as well. Just put your hand on, standing up, put your hand on your ankle, and then tug your leg back so your ankle is nearing your buttocks. That stretch there, stretch those out, and do all of this very slowly. So diet, you're going to need to increase your serotonin production and you're going to want to eat some foods that encourage your blood vessels to dilate to give you some better circulation. Um, one meal that I would have, I don't know how it works, why it works, if it's placebo. If it is placebo, who gives a crap? If it gives you relief, it gives you relief. Um, but this food would just make me feel better um, and... You know, as I've implied, I, I, it's designed to increase your serotonin production. And so I would take a pack of frozen spinach, I'd cut it into fourths, I'd heat up a quarter of that in a frying pan, I'd drizzle some olive oil on it. Um, I think olive oil helps with this too, but, you know, that oil's really there to trap the heat over it to make it a lot easier to break up. And then I'd add at least two eggs to the pan, and I'd make an omelet out of that spinach and the eggs. I wouldn't use, like, an egg replacement, I'd use real eggs. Um, if you're vegan, I don't know what to tell you. Just try to get whatever's in eggs some other way. Um, I'd, then I'd dice up some sweet potatoes. I'd wash them first, but I, I'd dice up some sweet potatoes. And, um, I'd fry those up in a pan. I'd eat them with the skins on. And I'd also have some oatmeal. And I'd take my, uh, vitamin D3 supplement at this time. Another thing, another bits of food that I'd eat regularly is I'd have garlic, green tea, oregano, and honey, and cinnamon daily. Um, these are the vasodilators. The last slide was about was mostly about serotonin production. These are your vasodilators. And just on another note, if you are getting head rushes when you stand up, I mean, that could be your poor circulation, but you also could probably use some more iron. Um, in your diet, so get an iron supplement too. And if you don't know already, pretty much almost everyone is um, deficient in vitamin D. Um, and right now we've got coronavirus, and then one of the number, you know, one of the best things you can do to increase your chances of surviving that virus would be to not be deficient in anything. So you need to smack that vitamin D deficiency out. Almost everyone's deficient in it, especially in America. And I would take 5,000 international units of vitamin D daily, and that's the upper limit of how much you can take a day. I would take two, um, 2,500 doses. Another thing I'd take is I'd take fish oil. That's a blood thinner. Your blood's going to flow a bit more. Um, I don't know about prescribed blood thinners. Those might help. Um, I don't know about Viagra, um, but I took fish oil daily to increase my circulation. Um, and if you're having, I think all of you should at least try this. Um, 
I'm not even a woo-woo person. I just really think you guys should try this, um, especially if you're having symptoms of inflammatory bowel syndrome or irritable bowel syndrome. You should be taking some black seed oil. I would take two capsules. I linked the product I use in the description. I would take two capsules of this daily. Um, not going to lie, sometimes I would take three. But I can't recommend that to you. Um, and what that did is that really helped with the uh, the loose stool. That really, I believe, decreased the inflammation in my body. And so if you have hard flaccid syndrome, I really think you could, if you're stressed out even, you could really benefit from an anti-inflammatory supplement like black seed oil. So now let's go over some things that I didn't do, but they might help you. If you've tried everything, um, you might want to try these, all right? Visiting a sauna, or even better, an infrared sauna. Um, you know, that, that should help with decreasing some of the tension in your body. Maybe you could do this before seeing a masseuse or a chiropractor or doing your massage at home with your massage machine. Um, when I was using that massage machine, and I was holding it, I mean, over my whole body, but when I was holding it over my pelvis, and I was lightly pressing on it there, and it was grinding away, I could feel the tension breaking apart. And here's a hint. Um, if you have the kind of hard flaccid that doesn't hurt, when it hurts, at least in my case, that's when you're getting better. Like, I would be using that massage thing, and every once in a while, I would just get a burst of pain and then a release, and then I'd be a little bit better. Okay, so you need to have, and, and that would only come after my whole body had been massaged, okay? Um, another thing you can try, I didn't do this, it's kind of a shot in the dark, um, cryotherapy, and there's probably some supplementing out there that you can do to improve your flexibility, or something specifically made to make your body a little bit more elastic. I haven't looked into that at all, maybe it's something you can look into. That's pretty much it. Um, and just to conclude this video, I'm not trying to sell you anything. And, you know, I think that hard flaccid syndrome is so miserable. I would really have a hard time justifying charging people money to help them with this condition. But if I did help you and I stopped your, if I improved your condition, if some of the advice I gave you, you know, gave you relief or even got rid of your hard flaccid. Um, and you didn't have to, you know, I mean, if I just ended your suffering, <laughs> I, or if I prevented you from having to pay for not necessary scans and save you thousands of dollars, or if I save you the benefit of not having to worry about your fertility or going to testosterone therapy, because I have to pay, you know, over a hundred dollars a month for that now for the rest of my life. Um, if I save you from doing that, you know, maybe consider giving me a donation um you know i mean i could use it <laughs> um, my paypal venmo and bitcoin wallets are all listed below um i've also started a discord server that you know i mean i'm going to be talking on you guys can talk to each other on whether you're a survivor or if you currently have hard flaccid uh go check it out i mean i just created it so and this YouTube channel has zero subscribers. <laughs> so, you know, it's not going to be too busy. But, uh, you know, go join it. And, uh, you know, maybe we can have some one-on-one -on -one consultations. You know, maybe we can see, you know, what's specifically wrong with your case. What happened with me is I was an incredibly active kid. Um, lifted a lot of weights was really strong, uh, really lean, and I blew a hernia from all my weightlifting. And so I go and I get surgery done to uh, get my hernia repaired, and then, you know, a, f a few weeks after my hernia repair, I, I get hard flaccid syndrome. And maybe that's from laying down the whole time because you can't move much when you're recovering from this. Uh, maybe that's because they cut through my pelvic floor um, I think it, I think it was the recovery of just not being able, from going from, 
I mean, I was trying to be something of a professional athlete. I wasn't, but I was trying to be. Um, going from moving every day to nothing at all, uh, I think that just tightened my whole body up. And, um, yeah, and, that, and that'll cause hard flaccid syndrome. And that'll stress you out. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is my first time making a video with recording software. I did a short test. Um, so I'm going to see if I can stop this correctly. And yeah, leave a like for the algorithm because, again, this channel has no subscribers. You guys are the first viewers, so if you guys could boost the algorithm. Um, because people with hard class said need to see this video. Um, so, yeah. I hope you guys are... I hope you guys get better.